Thank you, Commissioner. Well, this evening brings us in for a special call meeting of just one single case. I know that uh, Jason's called me a couple of weeks ago requesting this meeting, and Jason, I appreciate your hard work to get this put together. Commissioners, I appreciate each one of you uh, coming out on this special call session and now to start this new year off. And uh, without any further conversation, Jason, if you will, please present to us this case, REZ 2016-01, Bout Off the Lounge Development Authority. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, and I do uh, echo those sentiments and, and appreciate the special time on the, on the behalf of the commission for your consideration tonight. Ultimately, what is being asked of you is for a recommendation on 123 acres that's off of Rocky Ford Road that is south of the M2 manufacturing facility, now known as the DuPont facility. With that, the county was approached with this particular project from the Development Authority. It's been negotiation for some time. And ultimately, what they are trying to work with is a proposed applicant who has a container manufacturing facility. With that, this particular facility has very specific locational needs that relate to um, different aspects of infrastructure, rail, water, and sewer. Um, and that's what I'll share for right now. But they have very specific location needs. With that, ultimately, um, they have a very large footprint, and M2 zoning does allow so for some very intense uses. So staff has looked at this, looked at the infrastructure, potential location of it, and ultimately, our recommendation was published this morning. We've tried to accommodate the special timeline associated with the request and try to do a proper amount of due diligence so we believe that it will be ready for your consideration tonight. I know um, with the information we began sharing last week, we've tried to consistently feed you with details about the project, the potential impacts that we believe should be considered, and other than that, the various recommendations you have before you are current as of today. You can see what each division within the TRC recommended. And ultimately, I'm here to try to answer any questions you might have and try to address any concerns. I know that the industrial, excuse me, the development authority is here tonight. I do believe they're going to have uh, probably at least two representatives speak. Other than that, we have had some contact at our office from people checking in about the case. I would say we had at least two. Uh, maybe three people checking in about the case. So far, I would say one of those was potentially in opposition, but I think their questions are more of finding out more about the case and what's going on. I'm not sure if it was enough opposition that they might show up or engage the commission at all. So with that, that's the limited response we've received so far. Um, the case was advertised in the paper uh, December 27th, which was last Sunday. We do expect it to move forward to the county commission uh, next week. But with that, I, I do believe it's going to be ready for your consideration tonight, and I'll try to answer any questions, and if I can't, hopefully the development authority can chime in and provide you with some information. Just, just, just uh, I just have one quick question. For Carmel, on the cover sheet, it is showing the request to be resolved 134, but then our work is showing 123. Is one, is, is one wrong, or are they they're the same? We're just curious. 134 was the initial... Um, request, but after the survey was done, it was actually less. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jason, and while, while I'm speaking here, I'm just curious. I know on on uh, of TRC, mm -hmm. I, I know that on your end of it, you wanted to break up uh, the total amount of acceptable rezoning. Yes, sir. Do you sir. care to talk about that at this time? Sure. Um, my motivation behind the conditions. Uh, Ideally, the first one is to make sure with all the uses that are allowed in M2 zoning, to make sure that we know and give them enough flexibility to operate their business, but also try to maintain some kind of consistency that we know how this property is going to be developed. The second condition is related to the fact that right now 123 acres is a large amount of M2 zoning. We're planning just tried to get down to a point where we could recognize how much do they how much do we believe they need, and then how much can we try to give them a head start with M1 zoning and then set them up for success in the future. So my concerns were really, if the first phase of this project is developed, I'm on board, I'd like to work with them on trying to make sure that phase is successful, but until that project is developed, I'd like to reserve the rest of that property so we can set that up for another rezoning case. If they, in fact, are a great partner in the community, they prove to be um, a great investment, a great partner, then we can entertain the rest of that property at that time. So it splits the property up into about 
74 acres of M2 for the initial phase, and then the rest of the property in an M1 for a potential future phase. Commissioners, any questions for staff? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Glavin, please. Um, what is the zoning basis for denial? The basis for denial from the zoning division this morning, I believe, was related to the location of the M2 zoning and the amount of the M2 zoning. Concerns with the future development map and I believe the location concerns for M2 zoning were dominantly where the concerns were for the denial. Any other questions for Mr. Lyle? Uh, no, go ahead. Mr. Bowman? Thank you. I'm not sure I understand that answer. What, yes, sir. What, what location concerns? Um, ultimately, one of the things that is absolutely for this case is the adjacent M2 zoning. However, one of the concerns is in the future development map, it's not showing this as for supportive of industrial on this particular property. Um, in my opinion, that puts the bearing on the applicant to say, we understand the map might not reflect this, why do you think you have a better idea than the map we have on record? That was my way to push through that map. It's not consistent with that map. I believe uh, the zoning administrator thought that's just too far. That, that location should be reflected on the map, especially for something of this scale, before we move forward on a case like this. The 66 acres, they, I'm sorry. Well, in, in their letter, in the in civil engineer's letter, they indicated there is a 66 acre rectangular plot along, or I guess the first part of the project would be on a 66 acre. Is that, am I reading that correctly? Yes, ma'am, I believe so. Okay. And another 66 acres for future extension. Yes, ma'am. So I'm assuming the 74 acres that you are calling for to be resolved in two is just a conservative number for the 66 acres. Yes, ma'am. And not the remainder of that. So yes, ma'am. I did. I wanted to, you know, I want to try to give them some buffer. I know things at this point for a development of that scale may change, so I tried to give them some buffer. But you're right. The 66 was my my baseline. Um. I have another question. Will the Board of Health be able to give any uh, their opinion before the, the commissions, before the commission meeting next week? I can follow back up with them, but normally they would give comments based on well and septic tank use. And so since it's going to use water and sewer, I, I don't think they would have any substantial comments, but I will follow back up with them. Okay. They just happen to not be at the portion of the meeting today. They left early by the time we got to this case. So are there any environmental assessment done on the type of manufacturing that's going to be there? Beyond what we've given in this particular packet, I'll let the development authority answer that. I know for a fact they've done more homework than, than we have, but this is what I've been given at this point as far as environmental criteria and environmental uh, analysis. So I think I'd probably defer that to them and let them fill that in. Last question. Go ahead, Mr. Jason, is the when the authority are they okay with the way you have divided, you have categorized, or you have placed M2 and then with a ring of M1 around that? Are they okay with that? Ma'am, honestly, I, I believe they're okay with the first condition. The second condition, it's my opinion that I, I believe their preference is to probably keep it all M2. And I, I know they'll probably speak to that, but Based on communication so far, I believe that they're okay with condition one, but will probably have condition two drop off and the entire property be zoned into. Mr. Bolton. You said you, I can't remember the exact words, but it, is there any historical precedent to divide the zoning when they ask for? Yeah, I mean, other properties that have been zoned into. Yes, sir. That are going to be one manufacturing mm -hmm. use. And we as a county say, we only want M2 here and we'll have you come back later. Yes, sir. We, um, just, just north of here on the zoning map, probably the one that I can think of most recently where we had a request for a large amount of industrial zoning is the kind of west side industrial, I said industrial business park right to the east of the landfill. You'll see the zonings there go from an 
conditional M2 to an M1 to a PD. That's probably the most recent example. That was um, maybe about five years ago, where I believe, um, I think their original request started at M2, but we quickly realized, look, we, you know, you're next to a neighborhood, we have some concerns there about an all M2 zoning, and we negotiated for a split. So I think the answer is yes, it's not very common. My expectation on this one is if the commission does recommend that particular direction, we would try to work with the applicant to make sure we had a zoning map that reflected, you know, where that proper boundary would be. Almost like zoning two tracks, sir, rather than just one. <clears throat> Any other questions for commissioners to staff? Oh, I have one. Go ahead, Jason, is this going to be, or is this proposed as a conditional zoning dependent on award of this project? And it will remain DA or not? I... I think it's good to consider whether or not we tie this even particular zoning to the success of this. Um, the Planning Commission certainly can do that. I believe it's appropriate to limit the uses. I'm not sure we need to limit this particular zoning to the project. If for some reason the project is not successful, unless the county or the industrial authority initiates the case, the zoning is going to be in place. Um, the zoning doesn't... You, I don't believe it's legal to put a condition on there that would make the zoning disappear if the project's not successful. It would be another rezoning request. So I think that for that one to say the zoning is contingent on the project, if the commission approves the zoning, the zoning is in place, and there would need to be another rezoning case to remove that. But well, couldn't it be contingent on acquisition of the property by whether it be the development authority or the the business may be coming in from the current owners and that acquisition does not take place as only your means EA. So that, I mean, I, I hear you, I understand you. I'd have to check on that. I mean, that's a good one because what you're saying is until it's completely finalized, the zoning doesn't actually get approved. Right. You know, until the pro if the project is successful, making it contingent on that, I'd have to get some help on that one, sir, before I could give you a, a full approval. I think the commission can do it. We can check with the attorney's office, but I wouldn't know enough about it, something that specific, whether or not whether or not that would be successful. Good. I understand what you're saying and, and where you're going, sir. I do. I do. I, I, I can only think of one case that the commission put a condition on there previously that was similar to, you know, the zoning, the zoning reverts back similar language like that and the result of that case was another zoning case would have to be initiated so the zoning was approved and then at that another point um, another zoning case was approved to kind of revert that back so the commission ended up hearing two zoning cases that's the only one i'm familiar with where a condition like that and i don't think it was worded as um carefully as the one that you're aiming at but that was the result was two zoning cases one to rezone one to back zone i mean just from a taxing standpoint I think the property owners will want that. <laughs> they're going to pay a significant amount more than an two property than an EA property. Yes, sir, and I believe... If it doesn't occur, right. which we all hope, I guess, it will. Yes. So. <laughs> yes, sir, and I believe the property is in a conservation tax covenant, so yeah, I, I think taxation is, is on their mind, but I, I don't know if this point is... Um, you're right, I think they're, they should be aware, and I hope they are. I hope they are. Any further questions? Any further questions? There being no further questions for staff, commissioners, any thing to discuss amongst ourselves before we bring folks to the podium? If not, anybody.